Hi folks, this is Mike Giesman from Blaze Trails Forgotten. I got a really unique story for you. This happened all on public land, and what it is, it's about sheep. You know, those big bang danging, big horn sheep. And this is a very unique story. I've never seen it documented. It might have been somewhere. These are all public land rams and ewes and lambs. This isn't some parky thing where you see them pets in the park. This, these rams were hunted during the hunting season. You know, my dad, when I was 15 years old, gave me a camera. It was a Pentax, a 500 millimeter lens, told me about the three doohickeys that you dial with to get your exposures and ISEs and stuff, right? And off I went, and, and there in Jackson Hole, where I was raised, I took photos for years and years and years, and it always kept with me, and I loved doing that. You know, I was exposed to all these big game animals, sheep, elk, deer, antelope, everything, when it comes to spending time in the out of doors after hunting season. I did that totally throughout my life. Well, living up in the wilderness for 16 years, I had a band of sheep that would come down and along the river, rut, the ewes and lambs, and then all these rams. And the unique thing about it was on one side was Absorky Wilderness, where those rams came down, and on the other side was a bear tooth. And all those rams come out of bear tooth wilderness, and they get in there and they mingle around. Well, the interesting thing about bighorn behavior is you might have three or four rams together come down. And they're really brothers and cousins. They summer together, they know each other, they have a pecking order. And the same with the rams up here. And so when they get down there, boy, heads really get to be bucking ahead. And... It's going nuts. And, and you know, the, what happens, usually the bigger ram, the mature ram in this group will stand there and the little rams will do all the picking on the other ram in the other group. So the little, the lesser rams will usually do the button heads. You don't even butt those big rams, the lesser one. And occasionally you'll, you'll photograph, which I'll have here, of two good rams, one high 160s, 170s, button heads with each other rather than the lesser undominant rams. But when I was doing this, I was out there one year. This is, uh, you know, they start in November and run into kind of December in the rut, at least here in Wyoming. So here these rams are. I'm watching out there, and there is one ram and another one, and they're fighting, and they're out there quite a ways. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm watching. I start taking pictures, and I, well, first of all, I noticed, put my binoculars up, I noticed the one ram had a, a chip right here out of his horn and he get hammered a couple times with this one ram and I go wow I said to myself the first thing I said self I wonder if he's gonna bust that off all these years I have come up on these rams that sometimes very rarely will have the horn busted off in the core sitting there which is round and kind of goes in it, it can be about you know, about that long, I guess. And that's very rare. I've only seen it one or once or twice. And that's because when they bust this horn off, the protection of that core is gone and that core is porous and it can get infection or whatever, disease, whatever you want to call it, can get in and travel into their sinuses and from their sinus, I believe, into the brain and they eventually die. So you don't see it very often, particularly if they bust the whole horn off and the, and the whole core is sitting there. These two rams have ganged up on this one ram, and they're hitting him here and this way, right there and right there. And there's a bang, 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 bang. So I'm a ways away, <clears throat> and I'm sitting there <laughs> taking pictures. Now, this is a ways away, folks. I'm not going to ruin this shot by trying to sneak in scare them off by trying to get in closer because this is behavior I've never seen in all the 60 years I'm out there wandering around in wildernesses and here in Wyoming. I've never seen this. And I'm thinking, you know, these rams could kill this ram the way they're hitting him or at least bust off his horn. 
Well, this is kind of a little sagebrush flat and the river's running there and the cottonwoods and the sagebrush is this high, it's pretty high. Suddenly the three of them go behind and I hear whack, whack. And then they come back out and I look when they come back out and this one ram has no horn, it's gone. I never got the shot where he hit him and it blew off. And then when they come out, these two rams keep hammering. And he's, I said, why isn't he running off? And, and they hit him right there at the core too. You know, imagine how much that had to hurt. All of a sudden I look, he turns and here he's coming. He's running right towards me. And back of me is a, a absorptive wilderness where he came from. And those two rams were from maybe the Baratus, and this ram was an outsider, and they chased him right past me, and I took photos of him as he ran him up and over, and last time I saw him, he was heading into the wilderness of Zorkies. I never saw that ram again. Never saw him back on the winter range. Never saw him the next year in the rut. And next year on the winter range, I'm sure he died, okay? So about a week later, I'm, I'm uh, filming, and all of a sudden I see the ram, and he's coming after a ewe, chasing the ewe right towards me. Toot, 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 toot. And right behind him was a pretty good ram for Wyoming, okay? A good ram. And, he, and, there, and I go, oh my gosh, he's still alive. And I toot, 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 filmed him, and I filmed him go by, and then he stopped and gave me a, a portrait photo of him standing there, I mean, really close. Because by then, you know, these rams, they've quit hunting them and they're just down rutting and, and you know, nobody bothers them. I'm in a place that hardly people film. I looked at my, the screen, I go, it, it, uh, boop, boop. The light went off my head, folks. Maybe you can figure this out. This ram, the horn was off on the passenger side. The ram I filmed the week before, the horn was off on the driver's side. It's a different ram. And he got his horn blown off too. So I, I, I have two rams here in one year with their horns blown off. This is really unbelievable. You know, these rams, when they fight, it's very interesting. And I photographed it all. I've got thousands and thousands of photographs. These rams do some unbelievable things during the rut to protect their body. And, you know, maybe some people have photographed it, but I haven't really seen this. And I, all these photos I've taken over the years, I've kind of documented it. And let me tell you, when they come together like this, they got these big, huge sinus pockets that are full of air. And that's like a cushion. Boop, boop. You see this one photo, this ram hit like here. And when he does that, his sinuses go together from one end to the other and it blew all the snot out of his nose. <laughs> and that's what happens. And if you look, you go, well, why has he got his tongue hanging out? Well, he's got his tongue hanging out like an angler. He has front teeth, he has molars, but he doesn't have anything but gums right here. So why would he, why would he stick his tongue out? Well, some of you probably figured it out, some of you maybe not stick his tongue out so he doesn't cut his tongue off with his, with his teeth when he's coming together and get his tongue severed off. He sticks it out like this. And then if you notice there, his eyes are up inside his eye socket. Why would he do that? Try to protect his eye. Because they don't guarantee, there's no guarantee when those rams get ready to hit, they jump like this and spring off their back legs. Just spring off and come together at, I don't know, 30 miles an hour, who knows? They come together like that with such force, it isn't guaranteed that they're gonna hit like this. Some of them will hit and miss and hit the, the bridge of the nose of the other ram. And that's how come you see that some of these old rams with busted noses with big humps and scars and, and, and hide peeled off, that's what's happened. One of them I photographed, the ram slipped and hit the other one right in the chest, in the heart. Now you can believe that really hurt his heart, hit and hammered like that 30 miles an hour. So they bunged up pretty good doing this fighting thing they go through. I, I like to say right now too, if you're interested, subscribe and also go ahead and like. Filming these sheep, it was really a pleasure all these years. I've got a, a series coming up, maybe three or four uh, episodes, uh, living with the grizzlies for 16 years up in the wilderness. 
I've got some really funny stories and not so funny stories that you might be interested in hearing from a fellow that lived with wolves and grizzlies. And I'll have photos to back up some of my stories and some of my don't because things happen too fast, okay? So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next Mike Eastman's Blaze Trails for Guys.